Hey guys, I'm retired Navy SEAL Chris Sinog, and in this video, I wanna teach you a smart way to handle emergency medicine. Now let's go ahead and get started. Joining me now is retired Navy SEAL sniper, Chris Sinog. All right, so why are we talking emergency medicine? Well, if I'm gonna teach you how to shoot a firearm, that means that you are working with something that could potentially cause harm to you or others. And it's important that you know how to maybe patch up some holes if God forbid something bad happens. So why do I feel that I can teach you this? Well, when I was a Navy SEAL, I was what's called an 18 Delta, which is a special forces medic. And I did that and I was a paramedic instructor for 20 years. And medicine is what I know almost as good as shooting. So I'm highly qualified to be able to teach you emergency medicine. So when it comes to learning emergency medicine, the number one thing that I want to instill upon you is the same thing as anything that you wanna learn or anything that you want to get better at, and that is training. That's why I'm making this video and that's why you're watching, so make sure you practice the things that I teach you. So when it comes to learning how to treat an emergency medical situation, a lot of you may have heard of the ABCs. And the ABCs stands for Airway, Breathing, and Circulation. But when it comes to an emergency, the airway is oftentimes not the most important thing. There's other things that are gonna take precedence over that. And that's why I came up with Smart Emergency Medicine. Smart stands for Scene Safe, Massive Bleeding, Airway, Reassess, and then transport. The first thing is, is the scene safe? If you come up to an emergency medical situation, obviously you don't want yourself or others to become casualties there. So you need to check and make sure it's safe. Even in a gunfight, sometimes the best medicine that you can give is stopping the person who is putting holes in either you or the ones you love. So you may need to return fire or get to a safe place before you can even start treating the patient. Next up is massive bleeding. So massive bleeding is like you see blood pooling. You see blood shooting out. You need to stop that bleeding because somebody can bleed out in as little as 30 seconds, but people can literally live after hours of not breathing. So that's why we don't care if the airway isn't open right away. We will get to that. But if this person is bleeding out, we need to stop it and use any means you can to stop that bleeding. All right, so now that we've stopped the bleeding, the next thing is airway. So you just wanna open up the airway, make sure that it is working well. When you're checking the airway, it's not just if they're breathing, but can you see the chest move up and down? The chest is all part of the airway, and you also wanna check to make sure there's no extra holes in the airway. So any holes that are below the jaw or above the belly button need to be covered with an occlusive dressing, and that's all part of airway. All right, so the R stands for reassess. Reassessing means going back and rechecking all your previous treatments. So if you stopped an arterial bleed in the upper arm and then you go to do something else like check the airway, as soon as you're done, go back and reassess that arm to make sure that it's not bleeding again now. And you may need to do that over and over until you get to the last part, which is T, transportation. Obviously, part of emergency medicine is the fact that you are not in a hospital. So we wanna get this person who is injured, or if it's you, to a hospital. If you didn't, it wouldn't have been an emergency. So make sure you get them going as fast as you can. All right, so one question that I always get when I teach people this is why I don't teach people to check for circulation? Why I don't teach people to check for a pulse? Well, I'll tell you, if the person has a pulse and there's blood squirting out, you know they have a pulse and you need to stop that bleeding. And the second reason is there has never been a case of cardiac arrest caused by bleeding or trauma that that person was revived. So I don't want you wasting your time or effort when you could be helping someone else. All right, and a last little bonus here. If you carry a knife with you, the world is your bandage. That's it for today. I hope one day this video might help you or someone you love keep paving their path to perfection. 
Hey guys, if you like this video and you wanna learn more, I put together 20 videos with the best training advice I've learned over the past 25 years of training others, and I wanna give those to you absolutely free. Just click on the I card that just popped up or go to chrissynog.com forward slash free videos, and I'll not only send you those 20 free videos, I'll also send you a free PDF copy of my new rules of marksmanship manifesto, which is the framework for everything I teach. So here's what I want you to do right now. Click on the iCard or go to chrissynog.com forward slash free videos and I'll see you on the other side.